just a few introductory things first before we get stuck into our subject today. And I want to let you know about a few things that we've got planned coming up for you. Um, I'm, I'm, I've changed next week's schedule altogether and I haven't put it on the net yet. And so next week up at Butterham, I'm going to be doing another talk about fear. Yeah. All right? Because I can feel a lot of you are in this state of fear. And what we want to do is start getting through it, getting through the fear. All right? So next week what we're going to do is I'll have a talk about fear on the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, I'm going to come up with a practical plan for you for the next month to trigger your fears. All right? And uh, there'll be lots of things I'll say to you. Some of them, some of them will be true <laughs> uh, on the Sunday. And, uh, and hopefully what that'll do is just trigger some of your fears so that, uh, so that you can start practically working through them. Because what's happening for many of you, you're getting locked up in the fear and not getting down into the emotion. So what we'd like to be able to do next week is just really focus you back on the fear. Remember, fear is your friend. So most of us feel our fear is our enemy. <laughs> enemy. So uh, that's what we'd like to do next week. Now, that's the uh, combined suggestion of a few spirits, actually. During the week, uh, we were fortunate enough to have a medium with us, and, uh, and so we got to talk with a lot of our spirit friends during the week, and one of them suggested to, to me that uh, it was time to start triggering your fears. And, start, and so instead of allaying your fears and trying to put them to bed, what we're going to do is try to bring them out and try to experience them and get through this fear layer that's preventing everything from happening. And you'll notice that many of you have been flicking into anger yeah. as well quite readily, more frequently than before, right? I don't know what AJ's done to me, he's just made me into this angry, fearful mess, right? That's how many of you are feeling. And so what we'd like to do is address the cause of that, and the cause of that is always the fear that you feel. So that's our goal next week. So the Saturday will be a fear is your friend discussion with a bit of changes to the original one that we did, I think, about 12 months or so, or 18 months ago. And then on Sunday, I'm going to talk to you and trigger a lot of your fears using different techniques. And one of those techniques is going to be talking about the coming earth changes on Sunday. And uh, because many of you are ignoring your fears about it. And so what we'd like to do is talk to you about all of those things and look at a lot of the fears within you and how it causes you at times to bury your head in the sand as well. You know, the ostrich style stuff, you know, like if I can't see anything and I can't hear it, then everything's going to be fine. And it doesn't work like that. So, so what we've got to do is allow ourselves to trigger ourselves through that. So that's next week. That's up at Butterham. Um, for those, uh, it's a new hall that, uh, sorry, it's not a hall. <laughs> You've had a good look at it now, have you? you yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? And the hall at Butterham is just wonderful. Uh, it's about, it can seat probably comfortably 300 to 400 people. It's a brand new $7 million hall. Oh. Air conditioned. And the owners of it have donated it for our use as often as we want to use it until they sell it. And so um, we'll see how long that goes, but while we've got that option, uh, we're going to be able to use it. Now because of that, uh, obviously a bigger hall has a lot more set up and a lot more dismantling things and it's got lovely toilet situation and it's also got six soundproof rooms if you want to go down and scream your head off. And so. Yeah, it has actually. Pur purpose built, this hall is. You're fine. So it's really, really good. But what we need to do, there's about 100 car parking spaces in, in the grounds. It's a 22 acre grounds. It's all beautifully manicured, uh, rainforest basically, with, with, uh, and, and a brand new hall. If you can imagine what $7 million buys, you'll get a good idea of, of uh, how beautiful it is. It's really beautiful. And we've been so fortunate to have it offered uh, for our use. So what we want to do next Saturday is have a meeting for those of you who would like to help us sit with the setup and dismantling of different things. 
Now there's a number of different uh, jobs that needs to be done uh, now that things are starting to get a little bigger. Um, and one of those jobs obviously is organising people with car parking uh, so that nobody parks all over the place. And he's, uh, so we, we need a couple of people to do that. And there's also obviously the clean up afterwards, uh, uh, obviously a 400 seat auditorium that's carpeted. Um, needs to be vacuumed at the end of each day and so what we want to do is actually keep keep it in as pristine condition as what we found it. And he has only one request and that is with your children not to have them play in the, on the garden because it's obviously just a newly done garden and obviously with him selling it he doesn't want to st start fixing up things that get damaged. So if you do bring your children along you will need to make sure you're a bit more uh, closer with what's going on with your children, which will help your law of attraction a bit more probably. And so that would be good for both your children and yourself. So um, there's also setting up obviously of sound equipment and all those kind of things. And so what we're going to do is have a meeting next Saturday at 10 a.m. in the morning at the auditorium for those who would like to be involved. Now I'm not saying that any of you have to be involved because my, Mary and myself are totally happy to clean up the whole auditorium after we're finished every night and we're totally happy to set everything up before we go as well. So it's only if you want to be involved if you come along at 10 a.m. And, and it'll be something that'll be fairly regular. We've got, I think, about... I think we've got about six to eight weekends planned already in that venue. Um, and, and so that's basically 12, day, 12 to 14 days, I think, or, or 12 to 16 days are already planned. And so obviously um, it'll be a fairly, um, it, it won't be just a one month arrangement, it'll be something happening over a few, few months. So that'll be lovely. And during the summer months, while it's nice and hot, you'll be able to sit in air conditioned comfort. So what we're going to do there is just have a donation box to help cover some of the costs of running that hall. Um, and uh, we, that's not been asked of us, but we just feel that it would be nice if we could express our appreciation for what's been donated to us. That would be lovely. So it's a really, really good haul. And myself and Mary are very enthusiastic about being able to present there. Hey, hey. Mm. All right, now, um, so, so the first discussion there will be the fear is your friend discussion. And then the next day, I'm going to talk to you about a lot of things about earth changes. And what I'm going to suggest to you is a, is a six week plan of how you can trigger lots of your fears. All right? And there's certain books you can read, there'll be certain movies that you can hire from your local DVD store, and then there'll be also a movie that I would like you to see on the, at the cinema. And it's the movie coming up called 2012, which you may have seen um, advertised. So, so we'll, we'll spend the whole time just triggering those fears and letting the fear come up and letting yourself get involved in that. And we'll, tomorrow we'll also continue the theme tomorrow with what we're going to do with our spirit um, interaction tomorrow. So tomorrow is the mediumship and healing day for, for those of you who want to do mediumship and healing. And tomorrow we'll be focusing on triggering your fears and helping you see what's really going on in terms of all interactions between spirits and humans. And we're going to come up with a lot of examples of that, what's happened during the week and different things I've been noticing with different ones of you in terms of what's going on with the spirit world because many of you are still very unaware of what's actually happening at certain times. And what we want to do is become more aware of what's going on there. So that's our day tomorrow, which will be continuing on this theme. And the homework for the spirit and spirit mediumship and healing will be related around fear as well. So there'll be some homework about that too. So we'll see how we go with all that. Have, have a look forward to a couple of months of fear. I'm smirking because I've had to do lots of it. So, you know, in the end, it's a, if, once you process fear, it's such a freeing, freeing thing. You, your life will never be different. You, it'll be never the same again. It'll be totally different once you got you through a lot of your fears. So you have a lot to look forward to getting through your fears. The problem is that we get locked up in our fears. And when we get locked up in our fears, 
our fears just dictate to us the rest of our life pretty much. They dictate almost every choice we make. It dictates almost what goes on in terms of, remember your soul is like this great big attractor, so it's just attracting, attracting what your fears are attracting in order to trigger your fears so that you get through them. So many of you will feel quite frightened about the next couple of months coming up and my suggestion is to allow yourself to let some of that fear come up in you. And remember you're allowed to shake, rattle and roll, shake, rattle and roll. You know, you're allowed to do these things, right? You're allowed to feel everything inside of yourself. Um, do you know where my eraser is? Must be somewhere around the place. Yeah, if I, if I guess it's pointless writing on a board if there's no, something, nothing to write and to take it off with afterwards. Now, today is going to be a discussion, a bit more of a continuation of a discussion about emotions. And the one reason why I wanted to do this is many of you are stu still struggling getting into the core emotions, right? And, w and so we then go down this line of, oh, is this, an, is this a capping emotion? Or is this a self-deception emotion? Or is this a core emotion? Or what's going on with me? And then after a while you get so frustrated that you just throw it all up in the air and say, <laughs> say oh, like, I give up, right? And then you come along to one of these sessions, you know, in two or three weeks' time and, you know, you get all enthused again and you go home and you try for the next two days, is this capping emotion? Is it, oh, I'll give up again. I was like, Oops. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so, what we want to do is, is we want to really uh, focus on some practical things that you can do in your life that will really help you access and know what's going on for you at any one point in time with regard to your emotions. So these are all practical things that I've had to do. I've mentioned to, um, them to groups before, but what I wanted to do is put them all together. Now, I haven't typed up the outline completely at this point for this session, but I will have it done by who knows when, but let's say, <laughs> let's say Monday at this point, um, so you'll be able to download that, and, and hopefully you'll then have a list of all of these different things that you can do. All right. Now, what's the soul? The soul. Ah, uh, you're getting sick of this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. This is sounding like brainwashing now, isn't it? I'm the master brainwasher. Another thing to add to your fear list. Huh? Right. Passions. Desires. Aspirations. Inspiration. Emotions. and so forth, right? Now, if I want to connect to my soul, I've got to start connecting to these things. That makes sense, doesn't it? If I really want to be who I really am inside, I've got to start connecting to these things. So, I've got to start connecting to my emotions if I really want to know who I am inside of myself. I've got to start connecting to my desires and my passions as well if I really want to know myself. I've got to get, start connecting to this, all of this wonderful stuff that's inside of me that I can begin to grow. And when I start, thanks, Pam, when I start receiving divine love, I'm going to grow more and more of these things. <coughs> In fact, I'm going to grow more of emotions. My emotions are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. All right. So, so at the, point, at, the, at the beginning, sometimes we start with our emotions like that, like just, we've got to sort of really look at it with a microphone, there's an emotion, <laughs> right? That's where we start a lot of times. I know that's where I started. It was like walking around in a black room trying to find an emotion, right? <laughs> that's how many of us feel, right? And, and the same often is, this, is with our desires. A lot of times with our desires, we're walking around totally clueless of what our personal desires are. And we don't know how to even follow a desire either. And later on down the track, we'll be talking about the law of desire. Because there is actually a law that God created about desire. And it's just as powerful as the law of attraction. Right? We've talked a lot about the law of attraction, right? And, but we've talked nothing about the law of desire yet. 
And the reason why is, to actually feel a desire, you've got to have some emotions. You've got to actually feel some emotions inside and work your way through them. Now, remember there's two primary influences on the soul. What is that? Truth. So truth-based emotions, these are, don't forget, these are all emotional. And error. error. Right. Does that make sense? Truth-based emotions and error-based emotions. All right. So these error-based emotions influence our passions and desires. Right. So error is always everything in disharmony with love. And truth is always everything harmonious with love. So when we have error-based emotions and error-based desires, error-based passions and so forth, what's happening now is our soul is filling up. And you could think of it like, you imagine you, imagine you all had a bucket of mud. Right? We're standing here and that's AJ's soul. Right? And when AJ was born, here we go. So that's AJ Salt. So somebody doesn't want to say that to me. Someone doesn't want me to say this. I'll just swap over little little panels that I've got here. How are we going? I bought a second one just in case. <laughs> um, all right, so let's say that's our AJ soul, and when we started, when we came onto the planet, everyone decided to throw mud at it. So all of you got out your buckets of mud, and away you went, splat, 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 splat. And eventually what happens is this soul got covered over like an eggshell, with all this mud. Now, does the mud define you? No. No. But we think it defines us. And this is the problem we have in dealing with a lot of our emotions. We are so afraid that the mud defines us that we don't even want to wash the mud off anymore. Right? That's what happens. And yet this mud needs to wash off before we start feeling the true base, the, the, the love-based desires and passions and longings that we have inside of ourselves. So that being said, I reckon I might, something must be happening with my skin as well, so we just sort that out as well. Um, one thing I'm going to probably ask for is um, we need a new sound system. <laughs> but we haven't got the money to buy it at the moment, so if you can just bear that in mind in your donations, that'll be, uh, that'll be good. But we need to get some higher quality stuff so that uh, none of these things continuously occur. All right, so, so with, with this soul, with all this suppressed passions, desires and emotions, inside of the soul. And what we need to do is work out how we can start accessing these emotions and passions and desires. And we are starting out like, it's like the beginning of a long, 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 dark, dark, dark tunnel. That's what it feels like a lot of times, right? Just this very long, long way away from any light. When we start looking down this tunnel, it's like looking down a great big sewer. You ever did that when you were a child? You, sometimes when you're a child you sort of investigate things a bit too much, like mum and dad don't want you to. And I don't know if you've ever looked down a long sewer pipe and then decided to go for a walk or a crawl up it. Right? And of course, in Brisbane that's a little dangerous because there might be a flash flood and all of a sudden people get caught in it. But when you do that, you get up to a certain way and then the fear kicks in. Because you can't see the light at one end or the light at the other end anymore. And unless you've got a light on you, it's very, very difficult to see your way. And you start worrying about what's there around you. And all these fears kick in. And it's like that with our soul often when we start off this process of emotional work. Because the first sets of emotions that usually come up are some of the reasons why we shut everything down. And a lot of those emotions are quite terrifying at times. So, so that's what it's like and we want to start looking at practical ways that we can start opening up this soul. Just some practical things that we can do. So, the first practical thing that we can do. Oops. 
first practical thing is change almost everything that is around you so that you can open up and grab your soul. Now, so what I'm saying here is change your environment. All right? So that's, that's the first thing. So what do I mean by that? I mean, have an environment or create an environment around you, and later on we're going to do a talk about creating a soul space for you to grow, but change your environment around you so that in the end you can enjoy working on your emotional condition. Does that make sense? So that's the first thing. Something's not going right here, is it? It's just like, I'm going to disconnect that, pull that up here, see how we go with that. Zit, zit, zit. It's going to be all the way through. This. It's going to be an interesting law of attraction when somebody's watching these videos. And, oh, 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 like, oh, I can't watch this, oh, I can't watch this one. Triggering some emotions. Oh, it's about emotional processing, isn't that interesting? Yeah. All right, let's look at changing your environment. What kind of things do I do? Well, firstly, I need to have an environment that is set up so that when I get to an emotion, I can process it straight away. So this means in my own home, changing around my home a little so that I've maybe got a room that I can actually go into without getting bothered by the rest of the family. And in that room, there might be a great big pillow or hard bag or something like that on the floor and I might have a thing, you know, one of these you can buy these sort of plasticky type uh, baseball bats now, you know, and you just got to be careful about the light when you swing it <laughs> and then you can buy a tennis racket that's quite cheap and then you can get a hose and then, do you know what I mean? And set up this room in such a way that you're, you can at least start allowing and processing through your anger. But also have some nice comfortable things in it too. You need a towel in it, trust me. You will need a towel. Because tissues are not going to be enough for you. <laughs> right? When you really get involved in your processing, tissues are definitely not enough. And so you need a towel, and all I do with it is I just fold up the towel into three or four on the, on the floor, and I just cry, and I, then, I don't, then you don't have to worry about blowing your nose or anything like that. It just all <laughs> goes on the towel. And then when you're done, you just chuck it in the wash. You know, like, so it's really simple. And, uh, and it's also a good use of the resources in your environment too. The, so, so set up it with a towel and, and also anything else that strikes you as something that will work. Now, if you live out in the bush a little, sometimes having a nice little enclave with a heap of old, you know, uh, crockery so, so that you can throw it out at the wall and you know just really let that rage flow and if you got if you live out the bush and you've got an old car in the backyard that hasn't been taken down the dump yet where you get a baseball bat and what you do is you pa you bang every panel so till it's totally beat up and then you get it taken down the dump mm -hmm. so you set up an environment don't laugh these are things that people are doing like millie's got that haven't you millie yeah, yeah. so so this is ways that you can help get into some of this emotion so so in the middle of a city, like in Brisbane or, or in Sydney or, or in, up in the Sunshine Coast or whatever, you can still process a lot of emotion quite loud if you've got the room set up properly. And you don't have to worry about your next door neighbour coming in and asking whether you're getting murdered inside or, or, or a policeman coming along or something like that because you're already processing. You don't have to worry about that. You can be fully involved in the emotion. The beauty of doing that too is you can also teach the family, particularly your children, how to handle their anger and how to, and they know where to go if they're angry. So instead of them getting angry with their sibling, they go in the room and bash, 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 and, you, and then connect. And after a while what will happen is they start to learn how to do all of this as well if you've got that, in, that thing set up, if you've got that environment set up. But if you don't set up that environment, what happens? No one's got anywhere to go to express their emotion except at the person who's standing in front of them. And remember for us as an adult, the person in front of us didn't create our emotions. They didn't create our stored emotion. They only, they only are the trigger of our stored emotion, right? The person who created our stored emotion sometimes might not even be alive on earth 
or they might be our father or mother or school, something happened when we were in our childhood. And quite often what we do is, because we haven't got the mechanism to express this emotion, because we haven't created a location close by that we can just easily get to, what we finish up doing is we, we finish up projecting that emotion on the people around us, which is a damaging thing that we do to our own soul as well as to theirs. So, change your environment. Do the things, uh, set up some things, doesn't cost very much, set up some things that help you connect to your suppressed emotion. And allow, you don't, have to, you don't have to go in there 15 minutes a day and try to get to your emotion. Trust me, your law of attraction, once you set your intention, will just ramp up a bit. Many of you have had that happen right already, where your law of attraction has ramped up a bit. You're going to have some daily things that happen that will help you get into the emotion. And if you've got a room set up so you can get into that emotion without feeling embarrassment or shame and all those other things, then what's going to happen is you'll get to your emotion a lot more rapidly. Does that make sense to everyone? So that's, that's my suggestion to you. So at home, we've got a few areas around our house that we've done that. We've got a boxing bag with a couple of baseball bats and a bit of gloves. And then down the backyard, there's a couple of very old, uh, I suppose you'd call them old fridges and stuff like that, and, and a baseball bat down there <laughs> so that you can get into that. And, and the key is to allow yourself to, to connect emotionally and express the emotions. Now around us, because we've got 40 acres, um, it's, it's a little easier to yell and scream um, without having to worry about locking yourself up inside perhaps. But you won't be able to do that in, in a town without somebody complaining. So create a room um, that, that is a bit more soundproof than the rest of your home and al that allows you to connect to and express your emotion. But also allows you to be in a degree of comfort while well, after you connect. So while you're crying, you can just lay on the floor and all the snot and all the dribble and everything can come out and you can just, you know, not worry about having to tidy it all up because you've got it all equipped already that it's easy to tidy up afterwards. When you do that, you're actually setting your intention. Can you see that? When you actually build this location, you're actually now setting an intention. There's a lot of power in setting an intention. A really good book, if you haven't read it, uh, was written by Dr. Wayne Dyer called The Power of Intention. Have a read of that if you haven't had a re read of that book. It's a lovely book. And it talks about the effects of setting your intention. Very, very powerful. And it's a bit of natural love stuff um, that he's got in it too, but look at it from the point of view of how powerful setting your intention is. So, set your intention to fix up your environment. The other thing you'll have to do with your environment is you need to look at the people who are surrounding you. If you are surrounded by a heap of people who do not want you to access your emotion, it's going to be very, very hard for you to access your emotion. If you are surrounded by people who are more willing to access their emotion or have a desire to access their emotion, you're going to find it much more easy to access your emotion. Um, You've heard it all like birds of a feather flock together. You've heard that saying, right? Well, you could also, if you want to get all you know, religious about it, you could also say, bad associations spoil useful habits, which is a quote from the Bible. But either way, what, whatever the people are around us is usually what we've attracted because we have desires in ourselves that is very similar. So, if I have a desire to shut down my emotions, Ken has a desire to shut down his emotions. Mary has a desire to shut down her emotions. We're all going to get together. We're going to help each other shut down each other's emotions. Now, is that going to help me access my emotion? Obviously not, right? But if I know that there are other people who are actually more open emotionally than I am, then spending a bit of time with them is going to help you, isn't it? Can you see that? So allow yourself to make some choices to spend some time with people who are more open emotionally. Allow yourself to do that. Also, look at in your home environment. Is your partner, your, you know, your, the living arrangements in such a way that they allow you to deal with your emotions? Now, what uh, I've done every time I've lived in somebody's home, which when I've travelled, I've done that quite often, is I explain to them up front, I am going to process my emotion. 
That means sometimes I'm going to cry in your house. And it means sometimes I'm going to scream in your house and I'm going to beat the pillows in your house if that's all right. And if I break them, I'll replace them for you. And, and I explain to them why, what's going on. Now, when you do that with your family, you are automatically making it all more acceptable. Also, you're making it acceptable for your children to hear it. And they just say, ah, mum's off again, processing her emotion. And then after a while, you'll find your children will come to you, mum, you need to go and process your emotion. <laughs> we have these friends overseas and their children, and one child I'm thinking of in particular is a nine-year-old girl, she goes up to her mum and says, mum, you need to process your emotion about this, this, this and this. <laughs> go now. <laughs> The reason why is that the daughter's got pain in certain areas of her body that she knows is connected with mum's emotions. She just goes straight to mum and tells her. We've got another friend who's now moved down uh, sort of New South Wales and a uh, five-year-old son comes up to her and tells her what emotions she's denying and when she needs to process them, basically. And also, he's also telling her what she needs to do when he's processing his emotion. Because she tries to hug him and he says, no, that doesn't work, Mum. You've got to stop trying to hug me. This is a five-year-old, by the way. You've got to stop trying to hug me, Mum, because if you hug me, I can't get into the emotion like I need to. You've got to wait until I'm finished and then you can hug me. Right? And he's, he's mediumistic, so he's got this spirit, his, these spirit friends talking to him about how to access his emotions. So he tells Mum what they're saying about how he's going to access his emotions. Right. So, very powerful, very powerful. You want to say a bit more about Zen? I was just, I, was, I don't it? think it's on. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, turn on. That it's worth mentioning that his guides changed after mum dealt with some emotions? Oh yes, that's right. One, one other thing I should mention, that probably we were going to mention it tomorrow, but we'll mention it today. What happened was, uh, like many of you lay, your, your, your mothers, you will find that when, when your little boy runs around with a machine gun thing that he's made out of wood, going <laughs> at everybody, you start getting a bit afraid of you've created this monster who wants to kill everybody, right? And what actually happened uh, was that um, Zen had had this, um, had a spirit with him who, was, who loved guns. And Zen then got influenced into, into loving guns. But the reason why was because mum had an emotion about it all. When mum worked through that emotion, the spirit who loved guns left the child and then a different group of spirits came with the child. And, and Zen, the child, five, he's five years old, told mum what had happened. He told mum, well, when you were angry with me, there was this little boy with me who loved guns all the time. But when you stopped dealing with that, when you started dealing with that emotion, that little boy went away. So he's telling her moment by moment what she's doing and what she's denying and what effect that's having on his law of attraction. Right? So it's very powerful once you understand all of that, what's going on. So changing your environment has this beautiful effect of bringing everything, firstly it brings all of your intention together. You're now actually doing something that's in harmony with, an, with, with love for yourself. So that's, that's the first thing my, my suggestion is. The second thing is to change your diet. These are all just practical things, right? Number one thing here, drink water. I know that might sound funny, but nowadays, a lot of people don't actually drink water very much. What do they do? They drink a cup of tea or you know, go and get a can of Coke. Or I knew one lady, I, was, I went to this seminar in... Um, so everyone got your water? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry. If, if, if we need to have a break in 15 minutes' time because all of you need to go to the toilet, that's fine. Now drink your water. Now, I drink five litres a day, on the average. And when I drink five litres a day, every time any spirits come to me, they told me they sh that I should be drinking more. <laughs> so that gives you an idea. Now, the reason why drinking water is so important is because water hydrates your physical body, right? Now, in hydrating your physical body, 
the emotional adjustments you make when you release an emotion cause physical changes in your body and those physical changes cause a lot of releasing of toxins in your body so a lot of toxins get released and water is the mechanism by which all toxins in your body get processed so so when you're on a divine love path you need to drink a lot of water you're processing emotions which are causing a whole he heap of toxins to hit your system and you need to drink a lot so ever since I've began doing it I drink around five to six litres of water every day um, so if I haven't polished off two of these these are 2.4 litres uh, if I haven't polished off two of these by about 5 p.m then normally I'm saying, mm, I wonder what I was doing today. Why didn't I love myself? And you'll find that after a while, your whole body will get used to that. And you will also smell a lot better. Right? Because water hydrates all of your system. All the toxins get pushed out as you, as you go. So, change your diet. First thing is with water. One, oh yeah, I was going to tell you about this lady. And we were having a discussion. There would have been about, I don't know, 40 or 50 people. This was in Florida, uh, in the US. And this lady put up her hands. She said, are you telling me that I can't be at one with God while I drink Diet Coke? And I said, yes, actually. You're not going to be at one with God by drinking Diet Coke. Right? And that is, by the way, a valid answer. Because you're not loving your body if you drink Diet Coke. And so it's all about lack of love of self. Does that make sense? And she said, oh, I don't want to be at one with God then. <laughs> Fair Nikon. She got up and left the discussion. Yeah. It's amazing what people will, how, what people will do to sacrifice their relationship with God. That's, uh, and drinking Diet Coke for her was, was the critical point. Yeah. So change your diet, drink a lot of water. Now, I'm not saying you don't, can't have a cuppa or whatever you want to do, but water is processed completely differently by your body than any other drink. So you can have water in something and that's totally different than having just water by itself for your body. Your body processes it completely differently. Because all of the other processing has to go through the filtering system of your body whereas water can be just absorbed immediately without needing to be processed. And so that's why it's really important to drink water. Drinking water also has the effect of challenging some of your emotions. And you'll find that when you start drinking a lot of water. One of the first emotions is, oh, I need to go to the toilet too often. <laughs> and you'll start understanding that you don't care about yourself enough. You're not in contact with your body enough. You'll start actually realising that most of the time your body is dehydrated. Right? Now your body is, what is it, 70-something percent water? And if you don't, now you think about your mass. So many of us are in between the 50 to 100 kilogram bracket. 70% of that, if I'm 100 kilograms, 70 kilograms of my mass is water. Now, that's a lot of water circulating around this system. And that needs to be hydrated, kept going. That system needs to be kept going. So, drink water. Now, when you start drinking water, you'll find that a lot of emotions will start getting triggered because of it. And so that's something that's a natural byproduct of drinking water. The next thing to do with your diet is... Now, these are just suggestions. You don't have to do any of them. Eat vegan. Vegan definition of vegan is no animal products in your diet. So no meat, no eggs, no milk, no animal products at all in your diet. Um, a question over, over there? Hi, AJ. I'm struggling with protein. Yep, good. Good question. Um, by the way, your body works this way. You need seven to nine, there's nine different amino acids that you need to construct protein. Uh, there's two different things that affect your body's construction of protein. One of them is whether you get those nine amino acids. The second thing is your emotions. All right? Now, your emotions have much more of a determining factor than even the 
the ingestion of amino acids. But if you have a variety of greens and fruits and vegetables in your diet and they're all raw, you will not have trouble with protein. In particular, if you also have nuts and legumes, you know what legumes are? Uh, so the things like alfalfa sprouts, uh, mung bean sprouts, all those kind of things. Um, if you have nuts and legumes as long and, and, and fruit and vegetables, you will get the nine essential amino acids to construct protein. So then there's only, two, there's only one thing that can affect your body's losing protein or losing muscle mass, and that is your body's own ability to construct muscle mass from those amino acids, which is all an emotion. It's all to do with an emotion. So what I found when I went and started eating vegan is I lost nearly 30 kilograms before I dealt with the emotions that caused me to continue to lose weight. Once I, start, once I dealt with those emotions that caused me to lose weight, I started putting that weight back on again. All right. So my suggestion is to... Oh, by the way, one thing I must say with drinking water, if you drink the amount of water I'm suggesting, you will need to have salt in your diet, not table salt, but mineral salts. Right? So you need to... I love salt. So have mineral salts in your diet and that'll, that'll sort out a lot of things when it comes to you drinking so much water. If you have nuts, legumes, fruits and vegetables, um, you can, you can uh, put on muscle mass, actually. In fact, the fourth strongest man in the world, I think Josh told me, the strongest man in the world four years ago was totally vegan. So, so there's no reason why you can't, you can't eat that way and still retain muscle mass. All right. Now, eating vegan is going to really challenge you. Now, when I say vegan, I'm going to also suggest another thing, is make sure a lot of it, or most of it, is raw. You will find, as you give up processed food, lots of emotions get triggered. You will find that you'll be so addicted to some of these things that you've been having every day that you think are a normal part of your diet. You'll be so surprised, trust me. And when you actually connect with the emotional reason why you eat it, you'll be surprised what the emotional reasons are. Now getting back to the emotional reason about protein, most of the time it comes by a relationship issue with either our father or our mother and their belief system and how much we want to please their belief system. All right, so look at that particular issue if you're having a problem keeping muscle mass on a vegan diet. All right, if you change your diet, this is just a practical thing you can do, you will find it gives your whole body a shake-up. When it gives your body a shake-up, you'll find emotions start coming up because we use food and drink a lot to suppress emotion. Right? Now, many of us in the past have come home from work, you know, get out, get out one beer. Because the first beer goes down real well, so that's one gone pretty quick. Second beer you can enjoy, right? Sit down and enjoy. After two beers, you're starting to feel relaxed a bit. What emotion just got dealt with? So there's a lot of emotions that just got dealt with in that process, you see? And if you won't come home and instead you sit down and drink some water, you'll notice the emotions that are still there that you can suppress using the alcohol instead. When you get up in the morning and you go for that first cup of coffee, right? there's some big emotions in there between your sleep and your awake state. There's some big emotions going on there. Let yourself start triggering them. You'll find that they're related to emotional issues. If you change your diet, now, by the way, you could also go down the track of saying, I'm, not, I'm just going to do everything that's love of self or love of others or love of my environment. Now, if you love your environment, you will definitely eat vegan. Right? Because if you knew what happened to animals to give you all the other products, including, of course, the animals' deaths, then, of course, if you loved them, you wouldn't want to do that. Does that make sense? The truth is also, if you love your body, you will always drink water. So if you can't drink water and you're finding it difficult to drink water, look at how much you don't love yourself because there's a whole big 
range of emotions in there generally. You see, if I have a focus of love of self and a focus of love of others and a focus of love of my environment, these things would automatically be happening for you anyway. Right? So let's uh, look what else we can do. So you could say that's something that you can practice daily. So what I might do is break down some things into... Whoa. I might break down some things into daily, weekly, monthly. And what I want to do is give you some suggestions that uh, don't take too much of your time, because I know many of you are busy during the day, you've got kids to get off to school, you've got all sorts of things, work to go to, all these things. So we want to give you some things, some practical things to access your emotions that are not going to sort of take big chunks out of your day. Does that make sense? So let's look at daily. What can I do daily? Number one. Pray. Right. Remember what prayer is. Prayer is a longing from you, a, a, a longing, a passionate longing from your feelings, from you, directed towards God. It doesn't require your thought very much. It requires your feelings. Right? So practice praying during the day as you're doing other things. You're walking around doing something. You might be, you know, doing the vacuuming. Practice praying, you know, feeling your emotions towards God. Practice doing that. Long for God's love to enter you. Practice praying as you're doing everything, just, just as a normal part of your life. We can do that without even changing a lot of our, our time. One thing that I feel myself, though, is that if you can... Um, if you can have at least a half an hour of time during the day where you can have some privacy to pray, that's a really good thing you, if you can arrange it. So for many of you who've got children, that might be difficult to arrange. Or maybe when they get off to bed, maybe you can have a half an hour where you just lay down and, and just feel the longing for God in that half an hour. Just give yourself time to pray. So that's really, really important. We've already said drink water, and we've already said eat vegan. These are things daily. What else can we do on a daily basis? Well, in the handout that I'm going to give, put on the net, I've got on the last page a list of dissatisfied emotions. So they are the emotions you experience when something's going wrong in your life, when things are not feeling good for you. There's a whole list of them, a whole page. And what I used to do myself is every single morning I would get up and just briefly scan over the page and put a ring around or take a tick next to or write down on a separate page the emotion that I woke up with. Right? So if I woke up afraid... I would look at all the, there's a whole th list of emotions under fear, and I'd look at them, yes, that one, yes, that one, yes, that one. And then I would carry that with me. And then I'd just pull it out during the day and look, remind myself that I woke up this morning in that emotion. And then what I do is I take notice of my law of attraction during the day, and I pull out my piece of paper and say, oh, that's that emotion again, you see, being triggered. Do you follow me? Oh, that's that emotion again being triggered. There we go. It's being triggered through the day as well. So allow that to happen. You see, a lot of dealing with your emotions is about awareness. Becoming aware of what you're feeling. If we don't know what we're feeling, how can we feel it? So we need to become aware of our feelings. We need to connect with our feelings. And if we've got these little tools or mechanisms to connect with our feelings, it's really great. So what I had to do for quite a few years, actually, is do that. And just to help me connect with emotion. Because I was very, very disconnected from emotion. And I needed something to do to connect myself. So examine feeling list. Now, you could do that two times a day, three times a day, or just once a day, or whatever. You know, as soon as you get up, just have a brief look. You can have it plastered next to your bedside table if you wanted. I used to just have a few printouts, and I used to just ring around the emotions, so then I didn't even have to write them down. And then I'd fold up the piece of paper and whack it in my pocket and just take it around with me all day and then look at it occasionally. 
And then I would ask, give myself a bit of time each time I looked at it, just, oh, am I still feeling that? Now, it could have been a dream that caused it, couldn't it? That you woke up with a dream that caused that particular emotion. But I, I know what a lot of your, your lives are like. You wake up in the morning by the sound of a bell, you know, it goes off, and you bolt up right in bed, right? And then all of a sudden you're in action almost, isn't it? Within a few moments, you know, you don't give yourself time to wake or anything, within a few moments everything's in action. Well, that doesn't allow you to f feel that emotion that you woke up with, you see? And it causes you to distract yourself from that emotion. If we have a mic over here. Thanks, sorry. Are you saying that you would be pre we preempt every emotion that we have? Sorry? Are, are we preempting every experience we're going to have from dream time to that day? Um, not every experience, no, but, but a lot of times in our sleep state there's two things that are happening. One is that we might have a dream of all the things that we were denying the previous day. So for example, if you had a feeling the previous day during the day that was getting shut down a lot during the day, you will actually dream about it generally overnight. So and this is why sometimes people in your previous day were in your dreams in that night. And the reason why is that there's often a whole set of emotions that we're suppressing in these interactions with people over, over days or weeks. So take notice of your dreams because they tell you the things you're not processing in your awake state. The second thing they could be doing is just sleep state experiences that re you're remembering. But even them, uh, they are law of attraction events that, are, that you're attracting in your sleep state. So either way, you wake up with an emotion, connect with the emotion. Allow yourself to connect, even if it's the middle of the night. Um, but if it's, if it's not the middle of the night and it's in the morning, allow yourself to connect with the emotion. But what often happens when we wake up in the morning, we wake up to the sound of a bell and then we're in action, which gets us way, way away from that emotion and gets us away from a lot of truth. If you can adjust your life so that you wake up naturally without an alarm clock, it's going to do amazing things for your life. All right? So that's just a bit of side advice. Throw away the clocks. You notice I don't wear one. And uh, we don't have them at home either. And it's very occasion. Oh, there, oh, there is one in our kitchen. Um, but in our eco tent where we would live and, and wake up and go to sleep, there's no, there's no uh, clock there at all. So throw away the clocks and allow yourself to start waking up naturally. When you wake up naturally, you'll wake up a certain time and you can even pre-program the time the night before. So it's not like you can't wake up ready for work. But, but, you, can wake up, but you can wake up naturally out of the alpha state and also know what it was that you were denying emotionally. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so feeling list. Uh, start off in the morning with that. Now, if you just do those four things in a day, you'll become far more aware of what's going on inside of you emotionally. That's all you need to do, really, in the day. And then you'll start getting quite connected with yourself. And, and then, of course, you need to deal with these emotions. But that's a different set. Of, we're not going to talk about that till a bit later. This is just some practical things. Any questions about those practical things? Yeah? Hi, AJ. On that um, water one and being a vegan, um, once every year or se sometimes several times a year, I do fast and um, Joy does one with me as well. Yep. And um, the emotions do surface yes. in the first five days. Um, but I never knew what to do with them, so I just suppressed them. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. So yeah. I'm planning on starting one to, on Monday, so <laughs> hopefully yeah. today I can gleam about what, what to do with those yeah. emotions when they surface. Your body is totally capable of surviving a lot of days, actually, without, without food. Well, we do 40 days. Yep. And um, over that period of time, yes, you do you, a lot of surfaces for you. Yeah. So the key is connect with it emotionally. Otherwise, you just, n nothing's really benefiting. Yeah. yeah. Other than you lose a few kilos. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah, you lose a few kilos, but you put them back, back on again as soon as you start eating. That's the trouble. Yep. All right. Let's look at the weekly thing. Once a week. What can we do? Mm. 
quickly. <coughs> um, first thing. Make a list of everything during the week that you can remember that made you angry. So it might range from, you know, a dog next door barking all night to, you know, your husband cheating on you or something like that. All the things that made you angry in that one week. Your anger list is a very important thing you to do because remember anger is the choice to avoid the next thing which is make a fear list. So anger, you get into anger because you're choosing to avoid your experiencing your fear. There might be another reason and that is you have a heap of expectations that you're also ignoring that are unloving. But we'll talk about those separately. Generally, your anger is your choice to avoid your fears. So if I have an anger list of all the things that I was angry about during the week, I'm now able to identify the things that I'm afraid of from that anger list. See, a lot of times we don't equate fear with anger, do we? When somebody makes us angry, we say, oh, that was an idiot. What an idiot there, you know? Driving along, look at that idiot pass. Why, you know, I'm going to sit, I think I'll go right up to his bum, you know, and just <laughs> sit on his backside just to prove, prove to him that I'm really upset with him. Or, you know, or look at this guy tailgating me. I'm going to slow right down and slow right down and <laughs> see what he does then, you know? And we have all of these responses without really noticing what's driving them emotionally, you see? So, gee, this is even... It's pretty, it's pretty bad when it annoys me as well. How are you finding it? It's just not good, is it? No, I like having both of my hands free because it's... because I wave them around too much. Hey, is it? Anyway, let's see how we go. There's something happening where it's touching something. Alright, so anger list, fear list. Now, the fear list, the anger list is not just the things that made you like frighteningly angry. They are the things that you were just sort of smidge annoyed about during the week. Because there's big things under that, big emotions under the smidge of annoyance. So, the fear list is not the things that you were terrified about. It's the things that you were afraid to do or that you arranged yourself around to not do. You know how we do that during the week. You see, in the Western world, we have so many things at our, at our resources, at our fingertips, so many resources at our fingertips, that what we finish up doing is we start constructing our environment in such a way to avoid all of our fears. Right? And we don't even notice we're doing that after a while. So after a while, yeah, I've got a really comfortable life. It's so lovely. We get up and do this in the morning. We get up and do that. And how do you feel when something changes? Oh, quite annoyed, actually. But anyway, we just skip over that bit and we get back into the... Da, 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 and away we go, sort of living a certain life that's all been modified around my fears so that I don't have to feel the my fears anymore. So when you make a fear list, you can actually start saying to yourself, hmm, I could challenge this fear next week. So what's the fear? So during the week the fear was whenever I talked to my mother, she always said something to me and I get really annoyed with it. So I got really annoyed with what my mother say, said to me on the phone this week. That was in my anger list, right? Remember, annoyed is the choice to avoid my fear. What's my fear? I'm afraid of actually facing my mother up and saying, actually, mum, that doesn't feel very good at all. You're not loving me while you do that. I'm, I'm, I, I felt quite angry about it and I, I'm trying to get underneath and look at what is the real emotion, but I do feel that you're not being loving. Now, most of us would be very afraid to say that because that will trigger the reason why we avoid it. And the reason why we avoid it is she might then get angry with us and then we feel mummy's disapproval and we're so afraid of feeling mummy's disapproval, you see, because it may, means that we're not very lovable and we just, we're just avoiding the emotion of being unlovable. Does that make sense? So there's a long chain of events. So the anger list, which was the annoyance with my mum, 
listed, identified, it was a choice that I got into, a choice to be in a rage with my mum or just even be a smidge annoyed with my mum. And it was a choice made because I avoided the fear of living in truth with my mum. It's a way for me to get out of living in truth with her. So I, instead, I make a list. My fear list is I'm afraid of my mother. I'm afraid of telling my truth to my mother. So next week I could then make a goal. Tell the truth to my mother. If my mother rings this week, I'm going to tell her the truth. Last week I was really upset with what she said. And when she doesn't want to listen to that, I'll say to her, Mum, you don't want to listen to that. I'm going to hang up now. And the next time you call me, I'm going to raise the same issue with you again. And we're going to just hang and hammer this issue until it's done. And that would be then facing the fear, wouldn't it? Of what mummy feels with you. Yep. Fear list, very, very good way of accessing your underlying emotions. Even if you don't under access an underlying emotion, at least you'll know what you're afraid of. Now, unfortunately, your fear is like a prison. If you can imagine every single fear you have is like a bar in your life. Like if you can think of a, you in a round cage, like you know one of those bird cages, you know, with all the wires, the terrible cages for these birds. You imagine that every single fear you have is like this wire in a cage that you're just sitting inside. Right? Now, I'm sure the bird feels fairly safe inside of this cage when a cat's right outside the cage going like that to it, right? But that's about the only time the bird enjoys the cage, really, isn't it? Aside from that, it's a very constraining and confining location. And this is what our lives become in many cases because we're so used to working around our fears that our fears have become like this cage that we're just sitting inside of, sitting there terrified inside of, and we can't move except when we don't have one of those fears. So when you've got a fear list happening, remember if we do this once a week, you'll see your fear list change if you process emotion as well. Now, if you have a little uh, journal, you know what I mean, by, like a diary or something like that, you can just have a little book, this week's fear list, dun, 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 write it all down. And just the act of writing it down actually causes some changes to occur inside of you because you're now wanting to know what you're afraid of rather than ignoring what you're afraid of. You're wanting to know what you're angry about rather than ignoring what you're angry about. And that has an, has a, an expansion of your awareness. The third thing to do is a... a desire list. Desire list is forward looking. So let's look at. So, what you do is you look at last week. Did you actually do anything you really wanted to do last week? So that's the first question to ask yourself. And if you didn't, why? And you will make lots of excuses like, oh, I couldn't because. And every one of those because has a huge emotion in them. Every one of them. Because if you're not doing what you desire, there's always an emotional reason an emotional reason that's disharmonious with love of yourself. Right? So allow yourself to look at your desire list. So make a desire list for the next week. And at least do one of those things on your desire list. At least one of them. Because if you're not doing at least one of them, you're not loving yourself very much. Right? So let's say one of your desire lists might be Go for a walk in a, in a uh, rainforest. So organise it, do that during the week. Your desire might be lay in the bath with all the kids gone, husband out, just, you know, just lay there, relax. That, do that. Make sure that happens this week. Right? Your desire list maybe have sex with my partner every night this week. So do that. Of course you'll need their agreement, but do that. Now make a desire list and then at the end of the desire list look at how much of it wasn't satisfied. Because you know where the source of many of your dissatisfied emotions come from? From not getting what you desire. Now everything that you desire that you don't get, there is a law of attraction emotion in. 
So if I'm desiring to get my bath time this week and whole of the week I don't get my bath time, there's a law of attraction there where I'm not getting what I desire. And I need to look at why. And you'll find it might be love of self. It might be that nobody around you wants to give you the time. So you're going to need to address that with your family and your partner and your children that why can't I have the time, some time for myself? Do you see what I'm saying? Every one of those things that you don't get that's on your desire list is an emotional reason for it. And if you can allow yourself to look at it emotionally. So it's, you, you don't use this to go and blame someone and say, I wrote a desire list, I wrote down five desires. That's all I had this week, five desires. And I didn't even get one of those desires. And that's not what I'm suggesting. What I'm suggesting is look at the desire list at the end of the week, look at what you didn't receive, and then go into emotionally access why you're not receiving. Now you may need to at some point have a chat with your family about that because you may be one of the reasons why you're not getting what you want is because you're doing everything for everyone else and nobody wants to do anything for you. And you may need to address that emotionally. But deal with it emotionally in here first before you talk about it with somebody outside. But this desire list will help you look at emotional reasons why you avoid your desire. Now some of your desire list will be just a desire for the week. Some of your desires that start appearing on this list you'll find will be universal type desires that affect your entire life. Like it'll just dawn on you one day. Ah, oh, my whole thing that I enjoy the most in my entire life is and then put whatever you put in there. You start connecting with your personality and what you desire the most and then you start seeing yourself differently. It's a really important part. Now, an anger list, usually you can do in 10 minutes. A fear list, well, it's based on the anger list, so usually you can access that in 10 minutes or so. And a desire list, you can do that. Or you may do it a bit differently. Sometimes what I do, and what I have done in the past, is just had a book open that on the table or somewhere, and whenever I'm working during the day or thinking during the day and I realise, oh, there's a desire, and I go to my thing and just write it down. And then I look at that at the end of the week. Does that make sense? So a lot of times you can do these things just by, and fit them quite easily into your life without, and still be a, uh, what, what the world wants you to be, this nice productive individual. Of course, uh, that's also something we need to look at in, in the lists. So those three lists. See how you go making the three lists? And I also add a fourth list for myself. Sort of a truth versus an error list. Right. Who needs to go to the toilet? Because we had a drink, remember, half an hour ago. <laughs> yeah? All right, well, let's say we stop for five minutes We'll have a, have a go to the toilet and then we'll come back. So we'll just have a break now for a few minutes. I promised you this would happen.